Starting with the 3D structural model of the concrete and steel, let's zoom in and turn off most of this stuff. It'll be interesting when we get to those radial vaults next summer. The structure includes a curved concrete awning on the front of the house that keeps the dirt loads off our window wall. The top surface is about 108 square feet, so it should weigh about 5,400 pounds, and it should hold about 22,000 pounds of earth. Let's hide that. The load from all of that needs to be kept off the windows, so these curved I-beams will transfer the load to the columns and then down to the footing. An earlier video we did covered putting in these ribs and the three middle steel beams, but we still had to set up the steel columns and set the other steel beams. The southwest side will hold our entrance, but first we need to locate and mark these coordinates on the ground so the columns will be in the right place. The beam is actually made up of two curved sections that are welded together. There's a mirror image piece on the southeast corner that will hold a bit of a greenhouse section. This is the simple drawing that I sent to RTC to get these made. Basically, the curvature of each section is defined, and then I gave them three distances that they would need to get the angle right. Of course, they did a great job. Here are the two pieces sitting kind of overlapping each other, so it's hard to see them. I got these steel columns pretty cheaply from the scrap metal place. Not sure what they were used for before, but a couple of them had a small hole drilled in the side. That was the only defect I could see, and that didn't matter for my structural application. I had made a template truss that matched the I-beams, and I used it to mark the column locations relative to those concrete arches. We also had a smaller template that matched the holes drilled in the column bases so that we could take that around to each center point, mark them, and then drill for the anchors. Then all the rest of the time-lapse footage was lost somehow, so just picks from here on out. Here's John bolting down one of the tall columns. The only pick of that I actually got. <laughs> then we used the skid steer to set the I-beam on top of the columns, but under the previous steel beams. I thought it'd be really tricky, but it actually went in perfectly on the first try. Here I'm carrying the second beam assembly over to the east side. The uneven ground made setting this one in much trickier, but the trickiest part was that the skidsier forks got hooked on the beam, and I couldn't lower them properly when we were done. In this pick, you can see that the forks ended up detaching from the skid steer. Oops, it's too bad there was no video. My little MIG welder isn't really big enough for this thick steel, so I just tack welded things together until Dan could come out and weld them properly with his big arc welder. We got all that steel up in just a few hours. In this pick, you'll have to imagine windows under all those I-beams and grass spilling over above. In this other view, you can see that we actually spent the afternoon working on the bedroom wing, which will be another video. All those tracks down there hint at the longer time required to position the east beam. Back to the computer model, which is actually a good match, except that I ended up buying thicker columns in real life. Well, the place is starting to take shape.